The second category, and by the way, oil. This is not oil. <laughs> <laughs> if it were, I'd probably still drink it. Some people do believe in a conspiracy theory that the Iraq War was caused by a drive for profits by oil companies, or the U.S. government. I don't believe this. What I do believe is that Gulf crude, <clears throat> which has 70% of the world's proven reserves, is a vital resource until everyone drives a Prius like us, is a vital reserve, a resource, not so much for us, 10% of our, of our oil comes from the Middle East. 30% of Europe's comes from the Middle East. 80% of Japan's come from the Middle East. I've got a story in there about trying to persuade the Japanese not to build a navy, which they weren't planning to do anyway. All they did was make a deal with Iraq. It's a sort of a funny story. Everyone wants their oil. Africa is now dependent largely as, as Nigeria falls apart on Gulf crude. India and China, whatever we do, are coming in big time as consumers. So that's oil. Uh, it's, it's an effect. It's not cause, I guess. Now, <clears throat> You can retroactively, some people are doing, <coughs> confirm or disconfirm your early support or opposition to the attack on Saddam Hussein in April 2003. And everyone's dancing around, tiptoeing, dancing, tap dancing, shucking and jiving. I, did, I voted for it, I didn't mean to, and I didn't vote for it. <laughs> I don't, I feel very sympathetic with that because I happen to favor attacking and getting rid of Saddam Hussein. I was told that my children were in danger, my wife was in danger, I was in danger, <coughs> nuclear clouds, the mushroom clouds, all the misinformation that we had. And I also had watched this sort of poor man's Hitler attacking his neighbors. And this did not bode well for world peace. So if there was a way to get rid of him, fine. If we didn't have a law against assassinating foreign leaders, that might have been an easier way to do it. But the question now is, is a very different one. I, but I think that before coming to that final point, we're told in Washington, don't, don't worry about the past. I mean, some mistakes were made. Mistakes were made. It's always the passive, subjunctive, you know. It's never I made mistakes, except the president is now coming clean. Mistakes were made, and I don't want to go through all those. But I think it was some of the blunders, some of the blunders that were directly responsible for the fact that we're in the situation we're in now. It isn't just that we went in and it's been a tough sell and there were a few blunders along the way. And my argument, I will now give you. Um, several blunders, and Santiana, who George Santiana, the philosopher, said, as you know, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. First blunder that I think is crucial was the Rumsfeld military transformation, which meant go to technology, downsize the forces, do it on the, on the cheap, save money, and if you suddenly confronted a situation sort of like World War II, uh, you still followed the Rumsfeld strategy, which was really totally inappropriate for the situation. The initial invasion, which by the way, the one thing that you can be proud of as Americans, and I am, and it isn't believed by all Americans, is that never was such an effort made to avoid civilian casualties. But now they're all killing each other and the casualties are <coughs> sky high. But the Rumsfeld approach made it impossible to carry out the job. And general after general after general who retires writes a book and says this, or doesn't write a book, but still says it, we didn't have enough troops. Why didn't you tell the president that? He said, I don't make the decisions. 
before he said, I'm a decider, he said, I, I, I asked the generals what they need. Well, you read, read Mick Trainer and Michael Jordan's book, Cobra II, and read six other books on the subject, and they're all unanimous that the military was very uneasy with being given this task with that force level. It meant a couple of other things. It meant that, and this is not widely known, I think. I found this in the, in the Trainer Gordon book. When the forces were pushing up toward Baghdad in 2003, they encountered Mujahideen, that is, trained guerrilla fighters organized in units. And they kind of blew them away. They wanted to get to Baghdad. It turned out that that was part of Saddam Hussein's strategy of releasing some of his forces, beginning to plan an insurgency, and somehow this was missed by our generals. They also passed, bypassed, one after another, enormous munitions dump with every kind of weapon you can consider in the arsenal, all of which became available to the insurgencies, the militias, the bad guys, the Shiite militias, the Sunni militias. Uh, the, these are monumental mistakes of judgment. You can say it's just 20-20 hindsight, but that's all we've got available.